Hello. Today, we've come to Wally Weir to take some photographs of the weir, funnily enough. What I'm gonna to do today is talk you through long exposure and some ND filters. So let's get into it. Hello, everybody. Hello. Hi. Hello. 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 So some of you eagle-eyed viewers may notice that there's a slight difference in recording quality today. I thought I would shoot this vlog in 4K. Why not? You got it. You may as well use it. It's a bit of a crop on the M50, but I mean, whatever, like 4K in it, make you look super, super fantastic. Um, I also have a different microphone set up. Uh, now, if you cast your mind back to the last video, when I spoke about my 17 to 40, I sold it. I wasn't really using it. I didn't really like it anymore. So, uh, so I bought myself a set of Rode Wireless Go, uh, the first generation one, because they were really cheap. So it's here, this little fluffy thing that you can't probably see that well, it looks like a moustache. Um, I will still use the other microphone for a more kind of run and gun setup, um, but this is a really lovely thing. If I'm fixed on a tripod, because I currently have you on a tripod and then him on a tripod down there. So in my last video, I used my ND filter. This is it. ND filters come in many different shapes and sizes. This one's a kind of small square one. You can get circular ones, um, which I've currently got on my camera at the minute, uh, just to fine tune the exposure on that little camera. Now with these ones, you need a little cage. They kind of slot into and they go in front of the lens. Some fancy lenses, you can actually put them at the back, but I mean, they're super expensive. Now this is a Kokin. Um, 10 stock, uh, one of the cheaper ones. Um, it, I'll link it in the description below. It was about 75 pounds, I believe, when I first bought it, but that's cheap for a 10 stop ND filter. If you were to buy a Lee filter or some of the expensive, some of the other expensive ones, you're looking at hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pounds for a, essentially, a, um, for essentially 10 centimeters square, if not more glass that you can barely see through. So let me show you the effects of the ND filter. No. So this is the view through my viewfinder of my camera um, looking down the river towards the weir. So this is it without any filters in front of it. And if I just slide in the 10 stop, as you can see, you can't see anything. Isn't that special? Now, one thing you will notice is that I can't see anything, funnily enough. There's a few things you need to keep in mind before you take the exposure. Now, firstly, let's just take that out, put him back in his case. Are we recording? Who knows? Let's check. Yeah, we are. Fantastic. So the few things you need to take into consideration before taking a long exposure shot of quite a long time. This is potentially going to be 10 seconds. So a long time in camera terms. So you need to firstly focus on what you want to focus to because you can't see once you put the ND filter in front. So you set your focus point and you then lock it by putting it on manual focus. Turn off any lens stabilization or in-body stabilization, otherwise you'll get some kind of weird shakiness from the lens trying to be stable when it's on a, a fixed tripod for a long time. So I always go into live view and then zoom in, zoom in on the image to 10 times, focus, Essentially, I'm focusing to infinity because that's the distance of where, well, it's a long way away, the weir, from where we are. And I'll lock that by making sure it's in manual focus. It's now in manual focus, so it won't shift the focus when I take the photograph. Now I'm composed. I'm currently at about 24 mil. 
So that's as wide as this lens will go to, just to make sure I capture some of the trees either side. Because that's what we want to capture, isn't it? We want to capture the scene and not just the weir. Now I did take one picture already, but there's some crazy people swimming. It's cold-ish. It's been colder, but it's been warmer, and there are people swimming over there, so insane. But each to their own, different strokes for different folks, which is a swimming pun. So now we'll set the exposure. So I go back into live view and adjust the exposure of the image now, and then I'll get to the next bit afterwards. So we're currently F11 to make sure we get some a tack sharp image front to back. So I'm gonna go for 1 60th per second to make sure that the scene is exposed and you can see that it is. So what we'll do now is we'll put the filter in. So what I need to do now is adjust my exposure to match the scene. So as I used in last week, I'll get my phone out. So I use a Billy Big Stopper app. There are other apps available. This is just the kind of simplest. It just does one thing. Um, you can do photo pills. We'll do this as well. Um, but you've got to pay for that app and it does loads of other cool stuff as well. But I just wanted it for this specific purpose. So on the Lee Stopper app, we scroll to 1 60th of a second. And what this is dictating to us is we need to use 15 seconds. Now there's two ways of doing that. So you can either use the manual mode of the camera, which will go to 15 seconds, or if it's any longer than that, you use bulb mode. And then for that, you'll need a cable release. Now, if you don't have a cable release, you can do a two second timer. I just, if you're any longer than 30 seconds, you need to keep a button pressed. You don't want to stand there for five minutes, as you saw in my last video, holding the button down. So that's why you use a cable release. So what I'll do, is I'll set it to 15 seconds. So there we go, 15 seconds dialed in. And uh, let's take the shot, shall we? So it's key to remember at this point, your shutter is open. So what you need to make sure is that you don't touch the tripod. You try to stay as relatively still and away from the camera as possible, because otherwise any tiny touches to it, you'll jiggle the, the, jiggle the tripod and the camera and the exposure will be ruined. So yeah. So that's finished. Let's check it out. Now, one other key, key thing to remind yourself of every time you use a particular filter is if this one that you have isn't necessarily designed for the lens that you're using, because this is, oh, this is a smaller one, this is a wide angle, this is vignetted because of the frame. It's fine, we can sort that out in Lightroom. With just a slight crop, we'll fix that all together. No problem. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Totally. So what we'll do now is we'll take another shot. But you know, I won't talk you through this one. We'll just do it and uh, you can admire the scenery or something. may see that I did a bit to camera. Unfortunately, I didn't plug the cable in the camera properly. So there's no audio. But in essence, what my initial plan was, was to stand in the weir and wave my arms and shout hello, like some kind of Alan Partridge moment, and zoom in using the 4K. But unfortunately, the water was too deep and I got wet feet. I then proceed to do some bits to camera with taking a photograph of the weir, but because it's not plugged in, didn't capture any of the audio. So we're gonna put this in fast forward and then at the end, I change microphones randomly back to my original one and uh, you can hear me again. So moral of the story is, don't mess around with your camera whilst you're 
filming a video. So I've switched back to 1080p just because I wanted to hold the camera like this and I can't at 4K because it crops it in too much. So I got a little bit rushed then because there's a woman coming towards me and I'm not very good at speaking on my camera when there's people around. So yeah, so that's it. That's me done. I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget, like, subscribe. All the images from today will be posted on my Instagram, which is at Phipps Creative, which I'm sure you should all know by now. Thank you again for watching and I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye for now.